for the Christian, God is with you. Notice I said, for the Christian. But a man said this about sin. He said, sin will take you further than you want to be taken, and it will keep you there longer than you want to be kept. Lord, I need you. darkness you shine and out of the ashes we rise there's no one like you
just as that song said, let's just run into his arms with anything that we need to confess or even just, you know, allow him to, to search our hearts and show us anything in us that we need to confess to him. Um, because we know that when we confess our sins, that he is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So let's go ahead and take a moment to do that. And then we'll pray and sing one last song. Father, we thank you for God, the fact that you have sent your son to die on the cross for our sins. The fact that, that now we are called your children, God, and as your children, we can, we can run straight to your throne room, God. We can run straight into your arms, even as the song says, God, even when, you know, there's nothing good in us, God, and, and you see our hearts, and you see our sins, and our thoughts, God, and you know just our innermost being, God, and you you know how sinful we are, Lord, yet you still love us, God, yet you still sent your son for us, Lord, you still made a way that we can be made right with you and that we can have this opportunity, not just on Sunday mornings, but at any moment of any day, God, to just come to you in confession. And so we thank you for that, Lord. And we thank you for the promise in your word that you forgive us and that you cleanse us from all our unrighteousness. God, that your word says that you have clothed us in the righteousness of Christ. What an amazing thing that is, God. And so this morning as we, you know, as we've confessed to you, God, or as you've shown us things that we need to confess to you, Lord, we also ask you and thank you, God, for the strength and the power to turn away from those sins. And Lord, just as we're about to sing, God, that, you know, we need you, Lord. We can't, in our own strength, we can't be righteous, God, in our own strength. We can't, um, we can't just leave our sins, God. We will be those dogs that return to our vomit. But we thank you, Lord, that you've given of us, of your Holy Spirit, and that you've given us the power to do that, Lord. And so... Um, as I close this prayer and as we sing this next song, God, we just declare our immense need for you. And we thank you for being with us, Lord. In Jesus' name.
Salvation comes my way And when I cannot stand no fall on you Jesus, you're my hope and stay Lord, I need you Oh, I need you Every hour I need you My one defense My righteousness Oh God, how I need My one defense My one defense My righteousness so much for showing us that we do need you as we have confessed Lord all of our sins we know that you are faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness father so thank you God for that fact that you are our loving father you're our forgiving father that you're there with open arms to welcome us in no matter what we've done father as long as we confess them you're there to open to open arms father you're there to our open arms too as long as we're open to you lord and with that i do pray um for pastor alex as he gives the word today lord be with his voice be with his back be with um his heart lord and help him to to just preach the word as you have called him to preach it and i pray for our ears and hearts and minds to just be open and receptive to your word lord Thank you, God, for all of these things. In your son's amazing name, I pray. Amen. You all may be seated. Well, I appreciate that a whole lot, music team. I want you to take your Bible with me this morning and turn to the book of Isaiah. In fact, turn to Isaiah chapter 41. Now, as Lydia spoke of, my voice is off this week, is very hoarse. Uh, yesterday was bad, today's doing better. And so what I see is that today's message is so incredibly important for everybody in here. I mean, everybody in here. And so we're just going to work our way through. This is not going to be me trying to do anything other than just present the truth of God's message into your lives this morning. So again, if you're not there yet, turn with me to Isaiah chapter 41. <clears throat> let me go ahead and let me open this up with some prayer. Heavenly Father God, I, I thank you for the fact that we're able to be here this morning. The fact that God, you have, have welled me enough to be able to stand, to be able to talk this morning, uh, however effective that may be, God. And so, Lord, I thank you for the fact that, God, you, in our weakness, God, there is strength because of you. The Bible is so clear about that, Heavenly Father. And so, God, as every person here in this room is coming with issues, with problems, with situations, with joys, with struggles, with really life, Heavenly Father God. I pray that the message this morning speak deep, clear, and sincere to every person in here. God, just anoint the words, speak to the hearts, and God, may lives be changed however you see fit today. In Christ's name, I pray. <clears throat> Amen. You know, one of the joys of being the pastor of this church, really any church I'd assume, but I'm here for this one, is that I get to interact in people's lives and I get to share a, a part of what makes up your lives and really see the significance and the realities of what fashion the lives here at Oasis that make up this church and this body as a whole. I mean, think about it. We're all in different stages of life. We're all going through different life experiences. We have some engagements 
that have been settled. We have marriages on the way, one's next month. We have new babies and babies to come. Some people planning for more babies. We have people who have purchased new homes. We have people who have school situations, new jobs, old jobs, debts, purchases, all kinds of situations going on. Old, young, whatever the case may be. We are a church that it really seems like, in a sense, the vows that we made at the altar are being tested. Sometimes things are going better, sometimes they're worse. For some of us, we're in a blessed state where we're, we can say, man, I'm a little bit richer, praise God. And then for other of us, we're not just poor, we're po, right? Can't afford the O or the R, as they say. And some of us, we're, 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 we seem sicker. And some of us, praise God, we're doing better in our health. And so my message this morning, if I was to give you the just takeaway of it all this morning, is this fact. For the Christian, God is with you. Notice I said, for the Christian, God is with you. Because so many times we just have this idea as really humanity that, well, if I just do okay and I'm just nice enough that, that God's with me. But when we filter humanity through God's Bible, his one and only written word, what we begin to see and what you begin to understand as you read from Genesis all the rev way to Revelation is that that's just not true. God is not with everybody. God loves everybody. God created everybody. But God is not with everybody. In fact, let me read this verse to you. It comes out of 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 12, and it states, For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are inclined to their prayer. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. What, that's, what that is telling us, and I use that one verse to, to surmise my whole point here, is that for those who walk with the Lord, for those who have put their trust and faith in Jesus Christ, God says, you have now become my child, and therefore I am your father, and therefore we are in this together. But as you read Psalms, as you read Proverbs and other books, what you're going to find out is that God is opposed to those who oppose him. For those who have rejected Jesus Christ, God says, we're in opposition. We're playing on different teams. I hope that you will realize the error and the folly of your ways and repent and put your trust and faith in my son, Jesus Christ, and him alone. But until you do that, I love you still. I created you, but we're not together. In fact, you're living in rebellion to me. And so the Bible's pretty clear, and I just chose that one verse. But there's so many that simply say this, that those who reject Jesus Christ live in opposition to God. And those who have placed their trust and faith in Jesus and him alone, God is with you. Now you might be here thinking, well, that's not what I heard. In fact, I, I see a preacher on TV who tells me God is on my side. In fact, there's billboards around town where it says God is on my side. I don't know the pastor of that church. I, I'm not here to knock him, but at least when it comes to that one aspect, he's wrong. Straight up wrong. See, when you tell everybody, oh, God is on your side, everyone starts to have this idea that, well, then okay, I guess I'm good. I guess when I die, man, God's gonna let me into heaven. But when you come through the Bible, the Bible says no. It's only through Jesus Christ. He is the key. He is the one door. He is the only way into heaven. And so if you're in here today and you've never given your life to Christ, then understand God is not with you. In fact, you have set yourself up to rebel against God and it's not going to end well. Just read the Bible. But today can be the day that you change. Today can be the day, if you've never given your life to Christ, that you can give your life to Christ and you can honestly, sincerely know that God is with you through it all. Take your Bible, as I asked, and open up to Isaiah 41. 
And when you open up to Isaiah 41, what you're going to do is you're going to actually, if you started reading, you would see just God having this conversation with Israel, talking to them. And, and through Israel's struggles and their heartaches and their mess-ups and their sins, and God's bringing them back, and all that took place with Israel up to this point. Look at what God says. Look at what he says, and I want you to narrow down to two verses. I want you to narrow down to verse 10. Just take your Bible take your finger and read with me Isaiah chapter 41 verse 10. It says, so do not fear. Can I ask you, anyone in here have some fear today? Whether it's about a debt, a future decision, or maybe a, a family member, or just something else going on. God says, don't fear, because he goes on, and he says, I am with you. He goes, do not be dismayed. Anyone in here feeling dismayed today? God says, please don't, because I am your God. The verse goes on and it says, I will strengthen and help you. Anyone in here today feel like they could just use some strengthening this morning, that they could just use the help of the Almighty God? God goes on and he says, that I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Come down with me to verse 13, because it continues with that same theme, and I need you to see this. Verse 13 of Isaiah 41, the Lord continues, and he says, For I am the Lord, your God, who takes hold of your right hand and says to you, Do not fear, I will help you. What's interesting about these two verses, in both verses, God says, Do not fear. In both verses, God says, I will help you. In both, in both verses, God talks about holding the right hand. Why is it that God uses the right hand? Because it, the, the right hand, biblically, is, is a power, it's a symbol of power, it's a symbol of strength. You ever heard that phrase, my right hand man? And so what God is saying is he's saying, listen, as we go through this walk together, as we develop this relationship, I will help you, I will hold you, I will strengthen you. In fact, I will take your power and I will lead you. That symbol of strength in your life, I have control of it. You know, it's interesting in Judges, the book of Judges, the third chapter, there's this judge named Ehud. And when you read about Ehud, it makes this very, very, very small, brief statement, but it says that he was a left-handed man, and then it continues to talk about him. And I'm always like, why, why is it that, that he talks about him being a left-handed man? Because back then, and even today, I think 90% of people are right-handed, they say. Especially back then, it's very common to be right-handed. And right-handedness is a power and a symbol uh, 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 it's, a, it's, a, it's a symbol of strength. And so in Isaiah 41, what God is saying is he's saying, listen, as we go through your situation together, whatever it may be, whether it be the, the health or the sickness, the richer, the poor, the better, the worse, whatever life decision you're in, God is clearly telling us, not just in Isaiah 41, but all throughout the Bible, he is saying, I am with you. I will help you. I will strengthen you. I will see you through this. I remember one time I was at a, a, a gun show with my dad. And if you've ever been to a gun show, it's almost like any other uh, exhibition of tables. I mean, there's just so much stuff to look at. And I remember my dad, at that time especially, I mean, he was my strength. He's like, that's my dad. And so what does a kid do with his dad? He always goes and grabs that hand, right? And he lets his dad lead him. There is security in holding the hand. There is knowing that there's strength at the other end of the one whose hand you hold. Much like we should have <clears throat> in our relationship with God. Knowing that our heavenly father's hand is the one that we hold. That he takes hold of our right hand. And that there is strength. That there is, is power. That there is direction. That there is providence. in the one whose hand we hold. But like most kids, you may be holding your daddy's hand and what happens? You see something else. 
And you're like, I got to go see that. I got to go be there. I got to go. And you're like, Dad, come on, come on. He's like, son, we'll get there. We'll get there. Not yet. We'll get there. But so often we think that we know better. And so what do we do? We, we just, in this sense of urgency, we just let go of God's hand or our parents' hand, and we just run over to the table like I did, and you start looking around, you're like, oh, this stuff's so cool. And then you realize you have no money. And then you're like, well, I can't afford it, so let me go find my dad. And had I known the time, I would have realized like five minutes had passed. And I looked around, and I didn't see my dad. Started to freak out. And too often what we do is we do that with our relationship with God. We see something else and we think, well, that's what I need. And we start to pray to God about it and and God says, hold on, we'll get there. Or you know what, not yet. Or hey, no. And so often we'll we'll say like, well, we know better. And then we let go of God's hand and we run over to it and we realize, oh, it's, it's, it's not worth it. I shouldn't have let go. And then we look around and we feel like, oh my goodness, I'm lost. Where, where, where's God? Where's that right hand that I held so securely to? But if we just continue to hold the right hand of God and let, his, let him hold ours, so to speak, that God says, I will help you. I will strengthen you. The situation that you're in, my dear friends, whether it's gonna last a long time or just a few more months, or it'll be here before you know it, God says, I will help you in these changes. I will help you in these situations. I will help you as you go through this thing called life. Deuteronomy 31 verse 8 says this, The Lord himself goes before you and will be with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Do not be afraid and do not be discouraged. You know, I was thinking about that phrase yesterday and it says the Lord himself will go before you. You ever see in, uh, in those war movies or maybe just talk to people about it, the, the guy who has the job of cleaning out the minefield, because they know, okay, there's mines everywhere. Somebody's got to go in there and somebody's got to find those mines and clear them out. Who's ready to sign up for that job? But yet, there are landmines in life things that the Bible says to avoid, things that the Bible says you got to stay away from this. That's why the Bible says God's word is a lamp unto your feet because it will help you avoid those landmines. But what God is saying is he's saying, I will help you. I will go before you. I will clear out the landmines so that you don't have to explode on those, that you don't have to go through some kind of pain that I was hoping to help you avoid. Hebrews chapter 3 verse 5, or 13 verse 5, it says this, keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have. We talked about a whole series on finances and biblical finances a few weeks ago. We concluded that. So I thought this is appropriate because it goes on and it says, because God has said, never will I leave you and never will I forsake you. Romans chapter 8 verse 31 says this, for if God is for us, Who knows the rest of it? Who can be against us? You guys know that, but can I ask you, do you believe it? Do you believe it? Isaiah 43 verse 2 says this, When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will will not sweep over you. And when you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. You know, it may be hard for us here in El Paso to really have this idea of mighty rushing rivers when really most times out of the year we could just walk across the Rio Grande because it's so dry. But back then, especially in some of those rivers, man, there, there is power, there is might. And it's a lot of danger when you try to walk across and when you try to cross on your own strength. And so God has given this image saying, when you cross the rough rivers of life, guess what? I will be with you. I will help you out. Can I tell you, church, for the Christian, God is with you. I think in right now that, and maybe this is the Lord just asking me to to remind you guys, God hasn't let you down yet. 
there's been trials, there's been struggles, there's been things you've been dealing with, but yet here you are still clothed, fed, and taken care of. People might say, well, I don't feel like God is with me. You say it, I read it, but I don't feel it. Can I ask you this? Is there sin in your life? Is there sin that you've been holding on to like a child holds on to a blanket? Because a man once said this, I think it's D.L. Moody, don't quote me on that. But a man said this about sin. He said, sin will take you further than you want to be taken and it will keep you there longer than you want to be kept. Is there sin in your life? Are you spending time in God's word, the Bible? Billy Graham said about the Bible, he said, it's like God's mouth. He said, if you want to hear God speak, open your Bible. If you want to hear God be quiet, close your Bible. That always stuck with me. I thought it's simple and that's true. Are you spending time in prayer? Not just this rush, Lord, here's what I need today. Okay, see you at the end of the day. But I mean, you're really having that conversation with God because God's word is God being able to talk to you. And then prayer is giving you an opportunity to talk back to God saying, God, here's what I'm going through. Here's the situation. Here's where I'm at. I like this quote. It says, if you don't feel close to God, guess who moved? Well, it's not God. People say, well, I, I just don't feel close to God because, because, or I don't think that he's on my side because I've messed up too much. Friend, can I say this? That your mess ups are God's message. Your mess ups are God's message. That your mess ups are the very reason that God sent his son, Jesus Christ, to leave heaven, come down to earth, live a sinless life, die on the cross as the blemishless, perfect sacrifice. You, haven't, you can't mess up too much for God. Because if you could, then Jesus' death was in vain. And what was the point of it all? But your mess ups are God's message. In fact, even when you do mess up, like Joe talked about in prayer this morning, 1 John 1, 9, God says, if you'll just come before me and confess your sins, guess what? I will forgive you and cleanse you of all unrighteousness. That's a promise from God. If you think you messed up too much, let me remind you about some people in the Bible. Have, have you read about Israel? Have you, have you had the, the, the boldness to read the Old Testament and just see about the mistakes of Israel? That I think for every Christian, we have this com conversation with God, like, God, how can you love them so much after everything it seems like they do? They saw these miracles of God. They saw God do powerful things, and yet they still turned away to false gods. They still turned away to idols. They still turned away towards their own self-gratification. Gratif That's a word. We'll just go with it. And yet God kept forgiving them. He said, if you'll just repent. I mean, he sent them off into slavery. And God said, if you'll just repent, I will bring you back. Or the apostle Paul, who wrote the majority of the New Testament, what did he call himself? He said, I am the chief of all sinners. God was with him, just like he's with you. Through whatever situation you're going with, God is with you. Look at your pastor. Messed up yesterday? I'll mess up today somehow. Don't know, but it's a guarantee. I'll mess up tomorrow and I'll mess up next week. You want to know how I mess up? You want to you know more about my life? If you want to see the, the stains of my life, talk to my wife. I love the book of Samuel, the first book of Samuel, the 12th chapter. Um, Israel turned away from God and they wanted to be like every other nation and they wanted to get a king. And so then King Saul was appointed by God. And so what Samuel did is he told him, he said, you guys have sinned against God. You wanted a king when God was your king. And so then he does this incredible uh, lightning and thunder display, scares the snot out of Israel, tells them to repent, they do. And God says, all right, even though you've messed up, even though you've committed this great evil, if you'll just get up, dust yourself off and continue to serve the Lord, you'll be okay. We as Christians need to feel the same way. You may not feel like it, you may think you've messed up too much, but even as a Christian, 
God is with you even through the mess ups because that's why he sent his son. There's something I really need to communicate to you. And, and, and if you don't grasp this, you're going to miss the whole message. I, this isn't part of the message. It's just something God's been gnawing at me all week, and I've been wrestling with whether to add it or not. So here it is. If you don't take God's word by faith, then it's all in vain. Here's what I mean. All throughout the Bible, especially in the New Testament more often, you're going to see this phrase, by faith. By faith. In fact, a few months ago, I did a sermon on that little word, wordage, by faith. That the whole relationship with God is by faith faith. Can I say something? You may not feel like God is with you. You may feel that you are distant, that he has grown cold. Maybe your relationship just feels off. And maybe there's no sin in your life. And maybe you feel like you've been doing everything right on your part. But can I tell you that as we walk with the Lord, as we read God's promises, we have to take them by faith. When you pray, you are called to pray by faith. I mean, imagine if I, if I went up to Leon and I said, Leon, man, I need, I need you to pick me up tomorrow and, and take me to the airport. And he says, sure, I'll do it. What time? One o'clock. All right, man, see you there. And I walk away thinking, he ain't gonna do it. He's a liar. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What? I mean, that's how we are when we don't operate in faith with our relationship with God. We can't look at God's word. We can't pray the words back to God. We can't pray without there being some faith. Because then we just walk away with a conversation with God thinking, man, God's not gonna do that. I know his word says it, but I don't believe it. And so when you pray, when you hold to the promises of God, Hold to him and pray by faith. It's all by faith. And so whoever that was for, man, may that bless you. Maybe it's for all of us, I don't know. But we as Christians are called to operate by faith. Because as we believe that God is with us through the life situations, whether it be job changes or new changes or just life changes, whatever it is, we have to, by faith, operate and believe that God is with us, that he is, in fact, holding our right hand. It's by faith. And by faith, the Christian must believe that God is with you. See, what I've found out about the Bible is that God is with you every stage of life. Even before you come out of the womb, Psalm 139 talks about how God has uh, knit you. You are wonderfully and fearfully made. Even as a child, we see uh, so much scripture about God saying to help out the orphans. Even when Jesus was born and Mary and Joseph were looking at each other like, man, how are we going to afford this? Well, what are we going to do now? What did God do? He brought in these wise men with gifts and said, here, this is going to help you start off. Even as a young man, God is with us. Look at David. God was with him when he took down Goliath. Man. Adulthood. We see the the, the ministry of Jesus helping and healing so many people, so many adults, so many young, so many old. Look at the disciples how God took care of them because he was with them. Not only in the flesh, but by sitting on his throne in heaven. Look at the elderly. The Bible mentions so so many times to to take care of the widows. There are so many examples of prophets who were old in age, as the Bible says, and yet God was with them the whole time. In fact, there's verses that simply say God will never leave you or forsake you. As far as I know, there's no time limit on that verse. That when you become a Christian, God says, I am with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. And if God says, I will never leave you, then God's saying, I will never leave you. In fact, I won't leave you here on earth. And when you die, guess what? 
you're still going to be with me. We're just going to be in a different place called heaven. Which is what we as Christians want to desire every person to be with. Let me leave you with this. It's this, this statement I heard this week that just stuck with me. And it goes like this. If you're not dead, God's not done. People feel like, well, God, God's not, I'm done. God doesn't need me. No, no. If you're not dead, God's not done with you. He's straight up not done. Even on the last day, God still desires to use you. Just look at the Bible. So many times God uses people and then what? He takes them up. Look at Samson. Blind. Prisoner. And he said, God used me one last time. God used him. Brought down the walls. And all these Philistines died. I mean, it was, it was incredible. So if you're not dead, God's not done with you. That God hasn't forgotten where he placed you. Don't ever think that God's forgotten about you. God has not forgotten where he's placed you. And so where he has placed you, just be planted there and flourish. Amen? Just flourish where you're planted, dear friends. It's like a nursery where they grow plants. For a time being, you're in this greenhouse and, and they nurture you and they grow you. And then what happens? Someone comes and picks up a plant and takes it elsewhere. Man, it's the same with this church. Sometimes there's people who come into this church and we just nurture them, we just pour into them, we love on them. It's like a greenhouse for them. They kind of get their act together. Maybe they've been hurt, maybe they've been burned, whatever the case may be. And so what happens? God pours into them, God fixes them a little bit. And then what? Just like that nursery, God says, all right, now I need you over here. And they go, they get planted and they flourish until maybe later God says, okay, you've had your time there. I'm gonna move you up here. I'm going to be extremely honest right now because I think there's people in here who need to hear this. When I, when I, five months ago, over five months now, when, when my back just had that issue and just hurt and all that, I, I got real disoriented. I mean, just straight up disoriented. Uh, I remember Jacqueline came over to my house <sighs> like the, the rivers of Niagara just poured on her head from my eyes. I mean, I was crying. I was so disoriented. I was, I was, I was questioning God. I was questioning life. I, I thought maybe I'd sinned somewhere. In fact, it got to the point where I looked at my wife in the eyes and said, am I even saved? Maybe, maybe I messed up. Maybe I didn't say something right. Maybe I'm just, just a lost cause. I don't know. I mean, it was, it was so bad. And what it God allowed me to see was the fact that I really didn't have as much faith and trust in him as I had thought I did. That I would come to the pulpit and I would say some great quote or give some great scripture and I'd be like, man, yeah. But going through this trial, God showed me, he's like, you're, you're not as strong as you think you are. In fact, you're going to need me a whole lot more now than you realize. And as God has, has worked me back to at least a bit of mental strength and physical strength, the thing that I've realized and I, I've, I've heard in so many Christian songs and so many Christian hymns and even from our music team singing on Sundays and some of the stuff that I've read is that we have to operate and walk by faith. That God is with you every step of the way. It may not feel like it. You may not sense it but you are still in the hand of God. And like I let go of my daddy's hand at the gun show, that's not like us with God. Because in John 10, the Bible says how God says, you are in my, my hand and I will never let you go. And so whatever situation you find yourself in this morning, I just want to encourage you like it took me a few months to find the courage with God, to realize the fact that, that, that we operate and walk by faith. And by faith, we believe and we look at the scriptures and we look at the message and by faith, we understand and believe God is with you. God is with you. Let's pray. Music team, you can come up.
God, I, I stand up here right now just asking that you speak once again to the hearts of the people. In all honesty, church, I feel like this message was just a checkerboard of scriptures and illustrations that maybe they didn't flow well or, or work well together. I don't know. But I do know this, that this message, Oasis, it felt like it was a bunch of different parts that God was just leading me to say, leading me to do, leading me to speak about for the people in here today. In fact, half my message, church, God, I didn't even plan on saying. And I think that that's the Holy Spirit just working in people's lives through me this morning. And so here's what I'm going to ask is, as we're praying, guys, that, that if you need to do business with God, don't wait. Do business with God right now. Whatever situation you're in, man, just, just cry out to God. Say, God, I need help. I need help. You, you, you say you're with me. You say you hold my right hand. Just have that honest conversation with God. And But if there's somebody in here today who, who is not a Christian, who does not have the right relationship with God, understand this, that, that, that God loves you. He cares about you. He's, he's joyful that he created you. But it saddens him that he can't have that relationship with you that he desires because you have rejected Jesus Christ, his one and only son. And so if you're in here today and you've never given your life to Christ, here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna ask that, that you just come to the back of the, the cafeteria behind all the chairs. That's where I'm gonna be. And if you wanna give your life to Christ, let today be the day that you give your life to Christ because what is holding you back? Now, if you got a lot of things holding you back, can we, can we spend some time just working on them? Maybe you got questions, maybe you got past hurts, maybe you got issues, I, I don't know. But I do know this, that God wants to work through those weeds and create some fertile soil in your life so that his truth and his word can be planted in your life and that you can give your life to Jesus Christ. And so we're gonna do that right now. And for the rest of us, once again, I just encourage you, spend that time with God. Be honest with God. Have those conversations. In Christ's name we pray, amen. So music team's gonna sing if you, if you wanna give your life to Christ or you just need prayer. And I'm gonna be in the back, all right? All right, well, if you wanna stand or sit or whatever you feel led to do right now, um, we're gonna go ahead and sing this last song.
strong in us, Lord, that you will never fail, God. As Alex said earlier, Lord, you haven't failed us yet. God, if we're standing here this morning and we have breath in our lungs, God, we can testify to your faithfulness in our lives. And so we thank you for that, God. And, and just as we sang and just as, you know, we heard spoken to us, God, may you give us the faith to stand on your word, to stand on your promises, God, and to trust that you are with us, Lord. Even if we don't feel like it, even if you know we can't immediately see it, God, that that you are guiding us and you are walking with us, and so we just thank you for that, Lord, and um, we thank you for how you're working in our lives, God, and how you know, <laughs> as the song said, Lord, how you are shaping us into the image of Christ, you know, with everything that we go through, with the joys and with the trials and everything in between, God, and so we thank you for that, and we. Um, we just love you, Lord, and we pray this all in Jesus' name. 